Hello ladies and gentlemen and MBs. How is everyone doing? What have I been doing? What have you been doing? You can't tell me, but think about it. What have I been doing? I'm spread thin, if I'm honest for you. I've been practicing for the upcoming Stray From The Path Motionless In White Beartooth Tour, which starts March 8th, somewhere in Germany. It'd be lovely if you came. I would love it. We'd have a lovely little time. What else have I been doing? Oh, this is what I've been doing. Absolutely shitloads of podcasting. I've got a trade offer for you. If you're not watching this on wonderful YouTube video, I'm doing the hands from the meme, the trade offer meme. Okay. Currently, as you can see or hear from this, I'm doing every other week podcast episodes. Now, the issue, which it shouldn't really be an issue because it's why we set this up in Glasgow, uh, is I'm recording a lot of podcasts, two a week at the moment. I've got too much work. So trade offer is we get the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the downbeat to 2,000 people. It's at 1,500 people currently. We get it to 2,000 people. It's one pound, right? You don't get anything. You might get an episode early. You might get merch early, but it's basically just supporting. But if we get it to 2,000, I'm going to employ a producer to come switch the cameras in real time Possible Patreon perk may be that it goes live on Patreon. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. Someone will come and switch the cameras on the fly and then they will leave with the hard drive and then they will prepare it all nice with some little... Maybe we'll cut out the festivals, do a clips channel and we will do probably one a week because I can get a guest every single week. I just can't edit. It takes a long, long, long time. Two hour setup, two hour pod, three hour edit, back and forth. Chuck us a quid, patreon.com forward slash the downbeat, and let's see if we can get this a weekly thing. That's only 52 podcasts. Easy. I've done eight in January alone. In case you don't want to give me one pound, you want to give me more than one pound. Well, you've already given me one pound, and you think, oh, that's not quite a nice sweatshirt. Where can I get that from? www.thedownbeat.at. Nearly forgot it there. So it spells downbeat. Pick up a shirt, pick up a hoodie, pick up a sweatshirt. If you live in the United States of America, I suggest holding off until late Feb, early March. Going to have a US store. Exclusive US items. That's it for plugging. Got one sponsor. In fact, let's just do a new... It was annoying me. I've got a sponsor. Display, right? And I was just adding in the advert for Display. And it annoyed me because I got this new lens and the advert was with a different lens. It didn't look as good on YouTube. So, yeah, the sponsor for the podcast currently is Display. You can see them in the background if you're watching it on YouTube. They make metal posters that are mounted to the wall with a magnet. You don't have to drill. You don't have to lose your deposit because your landlord is a wanker. And they are. There's loads of different designs licensed stuff from not only the downbeat but marvel stuff computer game stuff that's video games to people who are under 36 years of age uh and with the code downbeat you can get a massive 23 percent off i believe it is a single display and i think it's 30 percent off three or more they come in a bunch of different sizes. I've got some around my coffee area. I've got some big ones in the background. I've just ordered some new ones for the drum room. They're pretty wicked. Check them out, display.com forward slash the downbeat. We'll get you to my store. I get a little bit of kickback from whatever you buy, and that helps support the podcast. My guest this week is John and Josh from North Lane. First met these guys. Don't want to ruin the pod too much, but I first met these guys when I was drum teching for Architects a long time ago, over 10 years ago now. Uh, stayed in touch to varying degrees. I saw them play with Sleep Token down the road. They absolutely smashed it. Their new album, my well, latest album, Obsidian, is absolutely probably a career best, I think, from them. We had a lovely chat. Check them out. Check out their tour dates, northlane.com. It's North Lane on the Downbeat Podcast. Uh, 
How's that? Just to get that, I want people listening yeah, like at this. home to in be, H, HD. Yeah, to be like, oh my god, it's like I'm, I'm fucking in, right I'm there. The room. I'm right there. I'm in the room with Northlane. <laughs> so bass heavy. Would you oh, like? Would you come like on. Me to, it's the way we like it. He's come in here, picked apart my <laughs> yeah, yeah. fifty second extraction. <laughs> Sounds pretty shit. <laughs> Sounds pretty terrible. Coffee. So how is the coffee? Is it shit? No, it's good. I like it. Nah, the pause tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> Scoffs. It's yeah, you, burnt, <laughs> you burnt this one, mate. I, I, right. Give me some. Give me some of your coffee background quickly. Well, let's get this. Nip this in the bud. All right. Are we? Are we on? Yeah, it's going. All right. We're so going when I was a university student, I oh, fucking straight into promo. <laughs> okay, so I worked at um uh, like a coffee chain in um, Australia that was pretty big at the time. Um, you want to shout them out? or they're... No, oh, I, I have severe ethical disagreements with the company. But um, they put me through like all this training and shit because they thought maybe that I wanted to work in the industry for the rest of my life. I actually hated every single day when I had to wake up at fucking fucked o'clock in the morning to go serve lattes to grumpy assholes. Um, and yeah, I just, I guess I learned a lot and, um, then just pissed off as soon as I could. How long ago was this? Uh, over 10 years. What, what North Lane album are we talking? Like so I can get pre- pre-discoveries. Glimpse, glimpse pre- pre-discoveries, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. After Discoveries came out, I was just like, see ya. All right, fair. Yeah. So you are qualified to tell me my coffee's shit. <sighs> Yours was uh, I've num- had worse. numbed with milk. How was that? Yeah, I like it. Thanks. The milk's the milk's okay. No, milk looks sucks. fine. I, we- I prefer oatly anyway. I'm a I'm a I'll use minor figures oat. Yeah, I don't mind that either. Mr. Barista, is that okay? Do you know that one? What do you use? Um, I use uh, my favorite. I I catch the oats myself. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't like oat milk and coffee. Do you point know, of no, mi- no milk at all in coffee, or just well, I, real life if, hell milk? No, nah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say I've never, never drank milk in my whole life. Um, Other than except when they get your coffee wrong. What about <laughs> what about mama? What about, what about mama? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I like. There's this. No, I was a biter. There's this brand me. in Australia called um, Milk Lab. I don't know if you can get it here. But their almond milk is amazing in coffee. Oh, this is. Dog shit. This one was terrible. Don't be so hard on yourself, Craig. I, I, there was stress put upon me. This before we get into fucking talking about music or whatever. Preface the situation. I broke my fucking camera lens. I get a nice. D- we weren't sure this was going to happen anyway. Yeah. Because you had some crazy bus call or whatever. Because you're on tour. Yeah, but we got that move just for you. Got it moved just for me. I was very thankful. Thank you. I'll make you a lovely coffee as a, <laughs> <laughs> as a, as a thank you. And then. Broke my fucking lens. I was going to cancel. Kim, shout out Kim, came with a lovely lens. As you can see, this lens is wonderful. It's schmick. Very um, nice. And then, yeah, now we're here. But that was already under pressure from there being a real-life cameraman here. Then I've got a real-life coffee man. Do you want me to get the synths out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should probably judge the synths right about now. I don't have any. I've got a whole, I've got notes and there's a whole section on synths. Look. Because I'm fucking, I'm, I want to know shit. I must say, Craig, if there's one thing I'm completely useless at, it's interior decorating and you've done a fantastic job of the place. Thank you Looks ever so much. Very, very nice. Yeah. It was, um, I told you this before, but it's probably worth saying. We had some people around at Christmas. I'm super stoked on it. Everything looks nice. There was three drawers that were left. Like, it was like, I don't, I guess in Australia you've still got like fucking, just like mum decoration. Like yeah, a mum, live, laugh, love. Like, it was like a <laughs> mum kitchen. So yeah. like there was a white drawer and it had like silver sparkly handles on it. And I was like, nice. Left. They were left. They were the last thing left for the kitchen company. Big fucking beef with the kitchen company, by the way. Come around yesterday, charge me 300 quid for plugs. Oof. Thanks, Patreon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then pe- at the end of the night, I said something like, oh, yeah, like, the kitchen will be nice once it's finished because of those drawers. And then everyone went, oh, we thought they were just an accent. And I was like, My God. what do you think about the whole place? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just- <laughs> if that's 
You think that I'm going around that? Oh, I'll get some sparkly drawers in the fucking middle of it. Yeah, why not? That'd be nice. Why not? Um, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making it work. Thanks to Sorry, Kim. Right. Thanks, Kim. No we'll get all that. Uh, how's your tour? It's been great. Yeah. It's been awesome it's to be back. Clap. Press, press guy shit. I've got loads of questions that aren't. <laughs> <isn't laughs> <it? How's> <laughs> I just got to get out of the way because sometimes like press agents are like, well, you didn't actually ask them anything. Mm. Well, they <laughs> give the people what they want. They, they, they don't. The press agent wants that. So, right. they, so they can send out and go, oh, da, da, great. The tour was good. Architects are was great. Was good. Um, <laughs> when was the last time you talked with architects? Because the first time I ever met you, I think, was with yeah, architects. Yeah, 2014 was. or something. Yeah. 2014. Um, was it yeah. Euro or UK? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember any of that. No, it was... I remember um, being there. Really into Valium at the time. Do you remember well. the squishy... Not... The bus was like at the squishy bunks? No, nah, D- Dan Burke was drumming for Stray then. No, but I was... Oh, dr- maybe I that's why then. I was drum tech You drum architects. tech for, for Dan though. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I was there. So you were there. Yeah, but it wasn't a tour. You didn't do the whole tour though, did you? No. You only did UK. Maybe the UK stuff. Or maybe just Europe. One of the two. God, we're good at this. It's been a yeah, yeah, long can't time. Remember. Fuck. can't remember any of it. Nah. Mm. I was too pissed. Mm. But, so in... Well, it's been better than that, then. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it looks... Yeah, it's been a lot better. It looks slightly <laughs> bigger. Yeah, just slightly. Yeah. So is it Architects North Lane... It was Architects North Lane Sleep Token yeah, that's yes. in Europe. Yes. And now it's... Sleep Token Sleep North Token Lane. North Lane. UK. Nobody else... Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, two. can I come? Two for, yeah, of course. Okay. I thought you were, I thought it was. Mate, two was band gonna, bill is, is the best. <laughs> two band bill is the fucking dream. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, like, we're playing for 50 minutes, you know, like that's sick. Even on a two bander. Yeah. Mm, mm. Even on mm. fucking holidays. Boys. Plenty mm. of dressing room space, you know, it's great. How big a fucking sleep token? Um, pretty big, it yeah. seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, they, like they've it. done like 3,000 tickets last night in um, Birmingham on a fucking Tuesday. This is like something I see from like both sides. Like you see people are, are beefing bands that get this big this quickly. Mm. But I, I just think it's the sickest shit mm. ever. Post-pandemic, there's mm. like... Oh, yeah. Do you know, remember that band, Lorna Shaw? Oh, yeah, the biggest band in the fucking world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Well, oh, yeah, to their credit, though, Lorna Shaw and Sleep Token um, and, you know, throw Spirit Box into this mm. basket as well have all been around for quite a while. Like, Sleep Token have had a couple of records out. Um, I remember hearing about them a fucking while back. Yeah, I think it might be it's not 2017, a new thing. the first one or something, a while ago. Yeah. But- and but. and then you know some of these other bands like Lorna Shaw have been around for fucking ages. Mm. I mean, Spirit Box have, but they were in bands prior to that Before. anyway. Yeah, like none got, of this had is training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they learnt what didn't work. None of this is like fluke overnight success. Which is people, what people say it is. Yeah, mm. people just weren't aware. Or just that's what it appears to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing that I really like is like whether or not you're into Sleep Tokens music or not, um, I think what they're doing is really creative and it's different and we can really appreciate that. We would rather tour with a band like that any mm. day than one that just read the fucking metalcore recipe book and went, oh, yeah. all right, let's copy. <laughs> you I know f- what I'm I saying? F- I feel exactly the same. Yeah. That, that's my thoughts on Sleep Token. Like, I'll listen, I'll, When I listen to it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like it's not on paper, it's not my shit. Mm. But then I see the fucking masks and everything and I'm like, good for oh, you right. not, got, <laughs> not they, going. They have like a, a choir on stage with them too. Yeah. See, that's Sick. when I saw them, they didn't have that. It was quite early on. It was uh, whatever their, their their first show thing was. I think it was a festival. Yeah. But like they didn't have that. And it was after all the build up of them being spooky and all this stuff. And I was expecting <laughs> like maybe like spooky. Not not in like a Some derog- spooky derog- not spooky derogatory. No. I mean like the, all of the shit. And I was like the same thing when I saw Ghost at Royal Albert Hall. Not to mm. put them in the same bracket, but like I was like, oh, I wonder what they're gonna do. Are they gonna mm. use the fucking organ? It was just a mm. ghost show, and I was like. <laughs> Okay, and then when Sleep Token did it, I was like, oh, 
just need a little bit more spooky. I need a spooky choir. Uh, yeah, and then boom, spooky <laughs> choir, in we go. I mean, they're it, great, they're great though as well. Yeah, it, I, I really like the way their music's put together as well though, especially with the vocals. Like that is not usual for the genre. Yeah, it's very, uh, again, non-derogatory, mm. pop. Yeah, mm. it's cool. Mm. It's very it's, cool. Uh, if you, I almost said the guy's name just. Oh my god! In conversation. Uh, yeah. Stop it! Stop it! Where's the stop on this? Red, uh, there we go. Abort. It, 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 you know, you do that. We can just. It's, go it's it. difficult when you you meet these people as friends and and you you call them by their names and then you're like, oh, that's what? not their actual name. We're meant to call them Vessel and. Yeah. <laughs> what, you I know? mean, malevolence like quite went into detail about what every member of that band looks like on the last episode of the podcast. So nice. you could probably line them up and figure it out by then. Yep. Um, what? One last thing to say about Sleep Token? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you're not. You're Fucking not. Oi, Architects though. Huge. That mm. one's going to go next. Fucking yeah. huge. That Was it Hamburg? <laughs> was Whatever show was like. Hamburg was one of the first three. They were all massive. Every single show was massive. Yeah. It was like all... Pretty much all arenas. Yep. They're like a fully fledged arena band now. So when we heard, when we toured with them in Germany, like I think we'd be lucky to do a thousand. Like well, they were doing, they were doing about that, but it was like most of the shows were like five hundred. Probably not more than probably not more than like two thousand. Back, nah, back nah, then, none of the shows were that big, and they all just yeah, over five, it's over six thousand. Like because you know how like. Sometimes you meet people in bands and you meet them early in the career and you become mates and then they get really popular and they turn into fucking knobs. Mm, it's a fucking <laughs> thing. It happens. It is a thing. They're exactly the same people yeah, they, they used are. to be. Yeah. And, it, and it's almost it's like they um, – I, I almost feel like after everything that's happened, they appreciate the friendships even more. Yeah. You know? Oh, there's definitely like a, from what they've been through, there's like all of them, they're the same people, but there's like a deep spiritual thing mm. in them, mm. particularly Dan. Like mm. I feel like, not to fucking, I don't want to go on a, a grief tour. <laughs> no, like, no, no, here but we no. Like, <laughs> like, Strap in. Obviously, because we all fucking knew Tom, but like, yep. and this is, this is a weird question that I probably wouldn't pose to those two. Do you feel like... Dan is really like Tom. Yeah. Like oh, more yeah. so. For me. He fucking looks just like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean. Dude, for me, like, you know, but when Tom was still alive, I didn't actually have like a super close friendship with Dan. And since he passed, he has just completely morphed into Tom it's like for a, me. He's absorbed he is, him. Yeah. He's completely filled that that spot. It's crazy. It's I sometimes mental. see photos and I'm yeah. like. That yeah. is Tom. Yeah. yeah. So what's the science now? <laughs> what's the science there? How did that fucking get? There? Um, I have no idea. And then, so you got this. Right, we'll get. I'll get all this fucking press shit out of the way. Yeah. Um. So when you were writing, I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I do have genuine questions. Okay. Got, I keep. I told you before. People. People roast me on the Patreon for for what being successful. Number one. <laughs> and then like number two, like how but, dare you? But you didn't answer. Ask any questions. And I'm, oh. like, I'm hanging out with my. Yeah. Mates. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't really want that. I want to talk about coffee and interior design and whatever. <laughs> then, but I'm taking it on board for your one pound a month to ask questions that I think people give a shit about. Oh, cool. All right, let's go. Some of my fucking... <laughs> some of my notes are so insane. <laughs> okay. What I actually want to know is the writing process for Northlane. Okay. What is it? Because we have like... Stray does it like old school as fuck. We sit in a room and we jam like we're fucking eighty-five years old. Mm. Like the grimmest. That sounds, sounds awful. Painful. That sounds awful. <laughs> it's kind. It's kind of sick. But oh, then, wait, yeah, if you can do it, fuck yeah. On on Alien and on Obsidian, mm. the synths. We're getting onto the synth conversation because I've got something. That's real quick, wasn't it? So I got so just got hard. No, but the, <laughs> the synths are so prominent. Yeah, I want to know. Are songs written around the synths, or do the synths come first, or is there a particular process of writing um 
in regards to the synth stuff, it's usually. I need you to come slightly closer to your microphone. I'm really it's sorry. synth. It's synth. Oh, I can hear myself in HD. No, um, it's it's, it's the synths come first usually. I think at least for Alien and especially Obsidian, the synths were written because in lockdown, like you know, everybody was like having a tough time, whatever. I didn't want to play guitar. It kind of felt stale, so I was just on the synths like all day, every day, just you know, getting high and noodling on the synths. And then, really sick. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then I look at what I what I had. I was like, the cats need food. <laughs> <laughs> Are you high? Yeah, yeah. Are you at least high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. been there all day. <laughs> yeah, come out, come out and feed the cats. Um, no. So then I was, I'd like look at what I had to to work with at the end of the day, and it was just synths and drums. And then I just had to like build riffs around that. But I feel like with Alien, it was um, maybe more of like a 50-50 split. And with the new stuff that we're doing at the moment, that's what I'm trying to do as well. I'm just trying to bring it slightly back towards the band and then using the synths to supplement the band as opposed to the other way around. Fuck yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Like any, my, I, there's rarely bands that I enjoy their whole like discography in progression with the band. Because mm. when, you, when you're making music, you're like, this is our best album. No one really comes out and goes, this is nearly our best album. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Putting everything into it. And there's there's only a few bands where I follow their trajectory and I like it as it goes on more and more and more. Mm. And it's Architects, Bring Me, Norflame. Mm. Who else? There's one other one I can't remember. Should have a note. Don't want to break the <laughs> But and do you know what the, the common theme is for me to enjoy it more and more and more? Since Adding more fucking synths. <laughs> mm, mm, I'm obsessed. Mm. More synths and more goth. And then I'm mm. just like, yeah, okay, I'm fucking in. The thing that I, the thing that I think about all the time uh, is that back when we first started, even though we were playing in metal and hardcore bands, everybody still had like this one electronic thing. It was either like an interlude on an iPod or like the intro was it. You remember you would like, you'd be the band would start, the lights would come on, they're all standing there all ominous and the, the intros, the, the intros, <laughs> the intros playing and then the intro stops and the band comes in. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and I always thought to myself like, fuck, it'd be cool to do that and just keep that energy that people were feeling like the entire show. And somewhere along the way, somewhere along the way, like <clears throat> we've done that. Now the synths are all through the thing. And all of those bands that you mentioned before, all are doing the, that same thing. It's just like, it's an edge in like what I think is like a pretty stale genre. Yeah. And with so many bass heavy synths, it means that, we can get away <laughs> We're not having a bass <laughs> without having a fucking bass oh, just, player. Yeah, are you playing bass or there's no, no bass? No, it's yeah, uh, it's bass on it's track. Tracks, yeah. Your favorite thing? Uh, I feel like a laptop. <laughs> uh, yeah, but some bands because I I slag it off all the time. But like, I know you do. Some no, no, bands, no, no. all right, you fucking slag it off. <laughs> Betty makes a shit coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like some bands, if you, in my opinion, if you've got a bunch of electronic shit. Really, you can put a lot on fucking track. Yeah. I draw the line really at a vocal line that a vocalist is not uh, doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's different. We don't do that. And no. then I mean, a lot of it. A whole guitar. I think I'm out on a whole guitar. A lot of it, John's like, he does a lot of synth stuff live, and some of it is supplemented in tracks too. Yeah. Because he can't I mean, yeah, play well, guitar yeah, well, and synth. Yeah, guitar and synth. So. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, I think we found a good balance that works for us. Um, no one's said anything about us not having a bass Oh, there's been a couple of comments either. every now and then. But, but, we um, had like a, f a couple angry Texans that were like, it's disrespectful to your old bass player to not replace him. What should we do then to stop playing music <laughs> or what? <laughs> yeah. In it's what fine, way bro, is it disrespectful? I don't know. They're both still alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. That's fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. Is it mental gymnastics there? But um, yeah. Rare, um, rare, by, rare by music, mm. isn't it? Mm. Uh, Works for us. Mm. Do you... So when you're at home, I need to get all the simple questions out of the way because I've got so fucking many. They're all like... <laughs> and they're genuine. They're not like press. It's just like, what's he up to? Because like, I see... So there's the end of... Zen? Yep. The end of that. Mm -hmm. bam, 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 bam. We changed so, that so, live. 
Are you talking, about the, are you talking about the I'm synth talking, at the end? Yeah, yeah. The synth at the end. So that thing that you're hearing at the end is the original uh, idea that I came up with that I built the entire song around. Which is why I had that question. Yeah. Does it sound like I mean, that? I know my shit. Yeah, it yeah. definitely does. Yeah. But also leads me to like, we get a little, no offense, get a little John solo. There solo is, thing of like sound, oh, yeah, yeah, soundscape yeah. shit. I have like heaps of stuff that I'm working on, but because in North Lane, I can write all the demos that I want. Eventually we need to book a time to record. And then we go in and we record it all again from scratch. Like there's a deadline. Because I don't have that for my for my solo stuff, and it's kind of just like at this point on me to make it sound good. Like yeah. as a producer, um, it's just taking a, a, a lifetime to get it across the line. Because I also feel like, you know, stylistically, I do a lot in North Lane, but it all works in North Lane. With the solo stuff, it's kind of all over the place, and that's not really how that world works. You kind of need to pick a genre or a subgenre and stick to it. Yeah. So that's hard for me to do. So I almost need to like give all my ideas to somebody within those genres and just be like, help me produce this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I bet you, you write something cool and your immediate thought is like North Ain't Song. Exactly. So yeah. What's yeah. going to be left? Yeah. Also, I don't know what people, I don't know what people expect. I feel like people expect my solo stuff to be like, I don't know, still kind of heavy in oh, an I electronic want, I want way. It to just be soundscape. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, 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 the, my that's the fun stuff anyway. Yeah. Is it like a big. Fuck it. Like, I don't know how, how does a synth, well, fuck it. I still haven't, <laughs> you, I still haven't pressed you for the actual question that I asked, but like, how what? does a synth work? What do you mean? How does it work? Like, what the fuck are all the cables? Oh, well, the modular stuff <laughs> yeah. you mean? It's the it's, Lego synth. Yeah. It's just like, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, they're just like 3.5 mil, like audio cables, yeah, mono, the mono cables. What do they do? They pass, I know what they, are. <laughs> they pass two things, audio and CV, which is called control voltage. And control voltage is just between zero and 10 volts or zero and five volts. And those the difference in volts changes parameters on particular modules. And particular modules have different, they respond to those volts differently as well. That's fucking cool. Because I have no yeah. idea. I see it like fucking hands in the studio. Yeah. And he's got all that fucking shit. I'm yeah. Like, the fuck? That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a different type of modular. That's, um, it's like, a, I forget what it's called. It's not what I have. I have the Eurorack format, which is like the modules that are like that tiny. And he's like the, I think they're like 500 series or something. They're big. Like do you that. bring them on tour or do you VST it? No. Yeah, I do have effort. the VST version, the VCV rack, but I don't know. I'm struggling to get into it. And the whole point is that it's just right there in front of you. So you can just like. Do you ad lib it live? Like, as in, like, you just fucking, you ever have to just, you just freak out and then everyone's like, John's on one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had an accident the other night. What did I do? What did I, do? I can't remember. <laughs> but I can remember that you had an accident. Too much accident. Too much accident. Nah, not usually. Wait, what's the accident? Come on. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. You hit something on the push and it was like horribly out, but then it came back in. Oh, oh so, so I'm playing these like, in the song 4D from Alien, I have the synth progression all cut up onto, onto different pads. So it's like a chord of like five notes, but I'm playing it with three notes. I've like summed the audio into one pad. Yeah. So I'm playing all like that. And then my interface, which plugs into my computer that all the sounds coming out of for the electronic stuff, disconnected. So it stopped. And then I'm like trying to get it back going. I'm like opening up the laptop and I'm getting it all back together. And then I come in for the next part and I go into the next part and I'm playing that. And then it just decides to play all of the shit that was playing, oh, that was meant to be playing before. Gremlins. So that, yeah. And then I just have to go back and hit that. And then I didn't hit it once. I hit it twice. So it's playing again. That's my worst nightmare. My, yeah. my bum hole just went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my worst fucking nightmare. It doesn't happen often, but. You yeah. can get away with it being like, yeah, I was just having a fucking yeah, yeah. Tom York I was moment. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Adding more fucking notes. <laughs> I was just jamming. Okay, so there's answer my actual question that I had, which was, so what's the writing process? Are you, you, okay. you, go, you go to synth. In fact, you just run me through it. Yeah. Like, so so it it'll generally start with an idea um, that would be drums, bass, guitars, synth, maybe even like a vocal melody. And then I'll send it to the guys and get some thoughts. And then we generally go from there. It'll usually, it'll usually be Marcus that'll do something first before we start like, getting rid of sections um, and it's just a very 
long, arduous process from there, just refining and refining and refining. So, like, it will go to Marcus with with lyrics, without lyrics, uh, without. Then he does some shit. He got a little rig. He set, he records um, demos. Yeah, yeah. And then you tell him you don't like it. <laughs> Do you ever have, have like fucking big big arguments? Oh yeah, yeah. we yeah. had a we had a good one actually. Um, uh, carbonized. We were writing that song. Oh wow, yeah. So, um, Marcus had written a chorus, and then John had like chopped it up into what he thought sounded better. Oh, I've heard this and before. It, and it was like a verse or some shit. And they were like f- fucking... That was Echo Chamber. It was Echo Chamber. Was it Echo Chamber? Yeah. It was like... No, no, no. But the, the, you, you had a fight about Carbonized because you both had an idea that was equally shit. And then I was <laughs> like, well, clearly we just haven't written the right part No, yet. in Carbonized, the chorus, when we left the studio, was a completely different chorus. Really? Completely different. And when you left the studio, when we left track. the studio, yeah. And then when we came came home, like a week, I took a week to just not listen to anything, and then I started listening to all the songs in order. And I was like, I hate this chorus so much. What I, was I, it? Sing me the other. Chorus. I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember. Which is a good thing. Like I can't remember, it, which I feel like is a good thing. Um, and Imagine then, if you could remember it, and then you'd be like, Did I make the right decision? Mm, just. We could just release the stem. <laughs> One stem. <laughs> People could just fucking add it in if they wanted to. That's fucking interesting. So what did you go back to the studio or you just No no no, we just we just did it at home and I'll um, be listening to that differently now. Mm, That's a different microphone. But like that coffee was shit. That's the, a different microphone. The studio we recorded Obsidian at was just like a big Airbnb. So we just uh, bought uh, all the shit we needed and did it with um Chris Blancardo. Including mm. drums. Uh, no, drums was done at, uh, at Chris's studio. Chris's in studio. But all the guitars and vocals, were, I mean, the guitars were all done in the box anyway. And the vocals we just bought. Completely in the box? I guess you're that kind of man. Oh, I mean, it was like reamped through um Go on, shout out my one, one of your company. Go on, yeah. get, it, get it in. You don't have any affiliation with fucking I don't Diesel. Have an affi- I don't have an affiliation with Diesel, but I've, I've, I've only got one amp left. I used to have quite a few. And it's a, a Diesel Herbert, and it was the amp of the last two albums. That's why they sound the way they do. So They're wait, okay, so you tracked it in the box and then you reamped it mm-hmm. through your Diesel. Mm-hmm. If you're going to keep one, keep a Diesel. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Cool. I got it for such a steal as well. I, I bought it off this like lawyer, and he had classic. classic isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, dri- I drive <laughs> out to his, money. drive out to his house. It's like this fucking mansion, and um. He like takes me through the garage and behind the garage, he's like built a studio in his house. Classic rich. Just so he can play guitar. And he's a fucking (laughs) like so much nice shit in there. And he sold me this diesel for like 1900 bucks or something. It's worth like seven grand. Yeah, that's fucking (laughs) awesome. Love a good steal. Mm. I tried to give someone a steal recently. I want to derail it but I'm going to derail it. <laughs> I tried to give someone a steal recently. I sold a Tama kit, mm. which I got for free. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was an old, old Tama kit where okay. they, just, they just had like artist stock and they were like, do you want this kit? Because I yep. needed a kit. Then I think at some point someone told me that I could sell it or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I got this for free. It was like a Tama Bubinga. Fucking guitarist. Nice. Just, yeah, exactly. Guitarist. Love Bubinga. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I fucking hate Bubinga, by the way. Do you actually? Yeah. Oh. They're not, I don't like it with drums. Oh. Not to get nerdy. What Nick, do you like? What, do, what do you like? Yeah. What do you like? Walnut. Yeah. You well, like walnut, don't you? Yeah. You did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. You, you look like you had a fight with a fucking walnut. I never owned a walnut guitar, but I do. Yeah, we're not really to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do walnut. like to eat walnut. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Uh, Quite nice. I was like, look, I got this for free. It was like a fucking Tamar Style Classic massive kit. And I was like, I'm going to sell it for like fucking 700 quid on like a forum. And I'll just make sure whoever gets it is not from a shop or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Then vet all these people. Obviously, a load of shops want to buy it. Mm. Then vet this one kid who was like, oh, yeah, I really want it, blah, 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 blah. He was doing it for his boss. Oh. And it was up for sale for twice the price the next day on eBay. What a fuck and with. everyone in the Facebook group, I left Facebook shortly after this, everyone in the Facebook group was like, oh, this has got scam written all over it. Like, because I'd sold it. I was like, how do you think I've benefited from this? I yeah. sold the yeah. fucking kit. Yeah. It was clearly not stolen. 
Yeah, fuck, fuck you. Anyway, back on, <laughs> back, on, uh, back on subject. Last two albums self-produced? Yeah. Or yeah. last three? Last two. two. Mesmer was... David Bendeth. And when you self-managed, correct? Uh, no. no. Self-management was like alien. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought it was Mesmer. Oh, uh, no. It was Maybe you were thinking about it. I don't think it. so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can no just comment. putting that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might be a problem. All right, so how did uh, what the fuck was Ooh. that? Kim, what have you done? Do me a favor. This is how you see how janky my shit is. Just nudge that fucking lead. <laughs> N- nudge the lead. Hey, don't be afraid to die. You're Kim, breathing. stop breathing. Kim, slowly pass away in the corner there, please. Thank you. Sorry. You would think. This nice wooden brick I could afford a fucking it's a facade, good isn't it? <laughs> um, do you know what it is? I bought another different light because I was like, oh, oh, you know, professional now because that's a fucking eBay dog shit job. And then I thought I'll get like one of the ones that I've seen people use, you know, the bar lights. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, can you tell me why this happened? <laughs> Sorry, this is, this is now a Kim podcast. Like it just flooded everything and there was no like shadows on shit and it just looked lame. So what light do I get? That, but better and bigger. Oh, like side skirts. Mm. Oh. Like on your car. Like on your car. <laughs> Don't fucking tell the Patreon about the car as well, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Patreon? Yeah. yeah. Really. How is it? It's good. It's good, yeah. Do you find, what, what's that? That's the one thing I didn't actually do any research on. The music shit's easy because I know about the music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what's your tears? Uh, we've got like a top one that's quite expensive called Bloodline. What, what do they get? That's what I want to know. Um, so there's only 20 of them. They get um, free merch every quarter. Every time we release vinyl, they get it for free. Um, they get like a VIP thing if they come to a show and we don't do VIPs for the public anymore. So the only way to watch a sound check and meet the band is to be one of them. That's cool. But I also give them tickets to like, if we play a festival and we get comp tickets, we give them to them. Um, And I pretty much just give them access to whatever gigs they want to come to. So it says that it's limited to like X amount per year, but we will, you know, give them whatever they want. Um, (laughs) They have like their own chat with us. It's only them. Um, and then they get the other perks from the Patreon. So we stream shows. We do live streams when we're off tour. Um, we send them birthday videos and greetings. And oh, that's cute. What's, yeah. what's the tech side of doing a Patreon-only live stream? How does that even fucking work? Because uh, I want to fucking do that. Mm. We just um, restrict the listing. On YouTube. Oh, so you still do it on YouTube, yep. but it's private. Yep. And the link, oh, that's fucking smart. Yeah. yeah. I'm stealing that. Steal yeah. my camera mixer idea. <laughs> and I'll steal that idea and we'll share and share alike. Yeah. When did the when did the the Patreon what's it called? It's got it's got a cool World Eaters. World, World Eaters, Eaters, yeah. When did it start? Uh COVID because yeah, we I was needed say, some yeah. fucking money. Did it did it like did it do its job? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, like it it has made like it's not if if you look at all the different income streams of the band, it's not greatly significant but it's like um consistent income that we can rely on but you know especially during covid it was much needed yeah so you know it's something we'll continue to do because i mean a lot of people want that experience and we like to you know service them and 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 just kind of put our focus onto that when we want to do limited stuff rather than just you know, opening it up to the public. We probably don't advertise it as much as we should. Um, but, you know. It feels it, weird it, when you advertise. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like that all the time. It's a yeah. good community. And, you know, I thought we were going to get blowback from it, but fans are really on board with it. And the top tier, like, sold out instantly. Yeah, that's a, fucking cool. A couple of people have chopped and changed. But, you know, it, it seems like a lot of money to me. But... You know, when you look at what they've gotten out of it on a dollar value, you would probably actually lose money from the top tier. Mm. Yeah, with, with the tickets and everything. Yeah. yeah, so, but we have four tiers and the lowest one's pretty cheap. What, what does the lowest one get? 
Um, they, Access to the live streams? No, they don't get that. Oh, sorry, that's the discovery yeah. one. We've I'm got like a impulse. store that they get access to. And there's a couple of other things. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's cool because it's – there's always – I mean, it, when you said it's it's not like as a proportion of North Lane's income, it's not like the main one or whatever. But for the podcast, it literally is the main one, which yeah. is fucking like – It's crazy. I wouldn't be able to do it. Like this is – including the setup, including edit, including this – this is, you know, this is a whole work day at least, mm. which I would not be able to do if we weren't getting the money from it. Yeah. But with in regards to music, it's like so many times you get those messages where someone's like, how do I really support the band? Because I was going to buy merch, but then someone tells me you get a merch cut. I was going to mm. buy a CD, but then whatever. No one has CDs anymore, but do yeah. you know what I mean? And if you've got Patreon, it's just super easy. To yeah, it goes straight. Patreon. It's the best way to support the band, and it's like the best thing about it as well as it's it's like ongoing for us. Mm. Yeah. So for them, it's like a, you know, it could be a pretty small amount of money that comes out of their account every month that they're probably not even going to notice. But, you know, for us, it all adds it's up. It's like one coffee. Yeah. yeah, if you get all the shit in your yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. How does that coffee compare? The almond milk. <laughs> Even <laughs> like the, 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 the second highest tier is like 35 Australian dollars a month. So it's not that much, but they get most of the perks without a lot of the physical things that the top tier will get. How often do you live stream? Once a month. One person once a month at the moment. No, well. But we haven't been doing no, that lately. No, we were doing weekly streams. So everyone would go once a month. Oh, sorry, home. sorry. Yeah, oh, right, shut the fuck okay. up. On <laughs> on tour, we've tried to stream a show a week, um, but you're kind of at the mercy of the and venue the Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah, but it sounds fucking great. Like, what? How are you running that? Sorry, this is people probably don't care. Uh, oh, we've, okay. we've just taken the left and right from front of house, putting cool. it into an interface, and then where's the camera? At front of house. Yeah, and then that goes what laptop or yeah. is the camera? Automatic streamer. Look at my brain ticking. Laptop. Just laptop. laptop. So we we did that on a stray tour, me and Tom, and then it, it like you said, the mercy mercy of the yeah the, the Wi Fi. Yeah. But then also we didn't run like a front of house mix. We don't really travel. You just doing the camera audio or yeah, whatever. Just, who wants to watch that? Yeah, <laughs> we tour our own desk and like console and shit. So That's what's easier. It's yeah, and our our um. Front of house guy slash tour manager is very, very savvy with tech and so is Kim. So between the two of them, I just yeah. go, hey guys, can you fucking sort this out? And I think that's yeah. where me and Tom were trying to do it and I'm trying yeah. to set up a fucking drum kit at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And I just get so stressed out. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's too much. I, I, I think like there, there comes a point in your career as well where you, you do have to look at, you know, getting the right help. Because mm. you, you can only fucking do Try that. Try telling shit. that to Tom Williams. And you know, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, but you can do it. I'm fucking Tom Williams. I can do it, probably, but, I but I'm quick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Look, he works, slag him off. Slag he Tom. works so hard, and you know, like I, John and I have a guitar tech now that takes care of our shit, and you know. The primary reason for that is like not only occasionally you need help on stage, but um, you know, if he's going to keep writing music and we're touring this much and I'm going to keep managing the bands and the other bands that I manage, I can't, f- like, be restringing three guitars every day, yeah. setting my shit up. Like, I, I literally just don't have time to do what I need to do to stay sane, which is, like, go running or, like, work out and then get my work done and then play a show, especially if we're headlining, playing for, like, an hour or more. Yeah, that's and do all of that just stuff. It. It's just <laughs> like, yeah, I, I I think like, you know, a lot a lot of people that I I know that are in business will will say that you do at some point have to place a value on your time. Yeah, I yeah I pay for my own drum tech because for those reasons because yeah. I just like yeah. try and keep on mainly not even like I try and work on tour. I'm a vlogger, mm. but like. It's, it's so mainly hard. going to the gym. If I don't go to the gym, I'm the worst fucking person on and earth. And even going to the gym's hard because you can't recover properly. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest thing that I've struggled with is just like getting the sleep, getting the nutrition. It's just impossible. Mm. Plus the hours of the day, like yeah. finding the gym. Yeah. There. I've just been doing my workouts with um, like power bands and stuff. 
Got someone to one? write me a program. I keep getting this. Oh, one. the one in the floor looks like a stepper. I keep getting it as like a yeah, sponsored ad. If that's not a piece of shit, it looks fucking. That would be fucking not. mad. It's just like yeah, a bar attached to cables. Have you on seen the that floor. one, John? No. Nah. It's like it looks like a stepper, and it's got like magnets in it to give you resistance oh, on cables. No, I have, I have, I have. But it, yeah. like people, just like, and you can do everything on it. Yeah, you can it squat yeah. and stuff with it. Big fucking jack dudes with like you the just bar sit on, on your back. back and yeah, fucking it's like failing. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is yeah, crazy. That's right? the, we've all got the same sponsored ads. So yeah, like, <laughs> like if that's sick. Someone send me one. I'll tell everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send me one too. So um, tell me about it. We I'm, went off a tangent there. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm trying. I'm really. I hope everyone that's listening is realizing I'm really trying to be <laughs> professional here. We're doing our best. Um, number one album. I didn't know that until I looked today. Oh, I've had a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones? Uh, no. I think our Nodes. number ones were Node, Alien, Obsidian. Obsidian. Yeah. Yeah. Alien was as well. Yeah. I think, I think oh, it was I'm Alien a- number three. No. Oh, it's there's Node. Been so many, I can't remember my oh. number one albums. <laughs> no, it's, no, I'm pretty sure it was Node and Obsidian for sure. Yeah, yeah. We had a couple number threes, like we'd get beaten by some big pop star or something in the wrong week. Well, who fucking won the. What was it? How do I pronounce it? Ar- Aria? Aria. Who the fucking won that? Because it wasn't you for once. No, for once. The chats. Who's that? Oh, this Bogan <laughs> punk band. It's Bo- <laughs> he's Bogan derogatory. They, they, got, they got like <laughs> songs like Pub Pub Feed and shit. Oh, Australian as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fucking funny. So, yeah, it's, it's a funny band. Mm. I can't slag them off because our um, publicist works for them too. So she'll give me a stern phone call. Yeah. Uh, if I knew who they were, then I could slag them off by then. Well, <laughs> yeah, you see, I think they actually took the piss out of the, the genre that their award was in because it was like hard rock, heavy metal, but they're not really, or I don't think they're a hard rock band. Yeah. I just think they're a rock band. Oh, I don't know. They're pretty, they're pretty punky, I guess. Yeah, well. I guess. I mean, it's hard. Yeah. Who fucking knows? Yeah. We, we because got I, three I would, of those. I would so have thought whatever. like Amel and the Sniffers is punky. Yeah, they're mm. about that punky. But that, they, weren't in, they, were in, they weren't in your category. Yeah. I feel like our category, a lot of major labels will like push their rock bands into just so they can Better win. chance to win it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't think we were going to win anyway because there's a voting panel for Aria. This is Arya's dirty secret. Mm. Come on. Mm. There's, a, there's a voting panel um, that decides who wins. They're made, it, it's like a, a college at electoral vote. So they will select people in the industry and say, um, you have a vote for this category. I All actually right. have one for ours. Um, this is how I know. All right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Do you vote for yourself? <laughs> Fuck yeah. No, you're, not allowed, you're not allowed to. <laughs> You are. You vote for yourself. My, my told me you weren't, you weren't allowed to do that. Cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not that it mattered. Yeah. <laughs> not that well, it fucking well the other thing is that like, you lost by two. A, a lot of <laughs> a lot of record labels are like owned by larger conglomerates, and they will say to it's this. The, it's the Grammy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. the same. They'll yeah. be like, you need to vote for this, this, and this, and everyone does it, and then they win. And we're and, inde- and we're independent. And that's why if you look at Wait, it was Alien Independent as well? No. Uh, there, there you go. go. That's it. That's it. But if you look at like the fucking Grammys and if you just had a list, if they, if they listed them with the record label that the band is on and their, like, and the label that that label is a subsidiary from, mm. it'd be a very funny list. Mm. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's cool to get the recognition. Cause I mean, I want one. I, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> I still feel like that. The Aria wins that we've had were like pretty cool. Um, yeah. And, you know, every, every single time that we won, we were up against some pretty big acts that had probably more label support than us. Yeah. So I think there is some merit in it. Um, <laughs> Fucking but backtrack there. Yeah. Just, a, just, a, tiny, the just that, a tiny bit. The times that we won, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was merit. Um, talk to me about these cats. I, uh, I. <laughs> So John has two, I have three. 
Yeah. Yeah. Fucking cat band. There's two yeah. cats in here, but none of them have oh, come really? to say hello. Yeah. Oh, you have cats? Yeah. Oh, I'm mad. Got Noodle and Pepper. Pepper is an absolute beast of an animal. Yeah. She looks like a f- puddle. What is she? Like a hairy puddle. I don't know, cat. Is there different types of cats? <laughs> is there different types of cats? Yeah. He, he, he's got snobby cats where they, what breed is it? And What's your breed? A Siberian. And the other one is a rescue. It's, um, I feel like it's half. He's definitely part Maine Coon. This guy Maine Coon, yeah. He's a big boy. These things are. Maine Coons Maine Coons are those ones you huge. see yeah, that pop up in your explore feed and people are holding this giant thing and it like yeah. lops over the side like that. Who's the one that looked like. A bath from a mortar. Yeah, that's them. Oh, right. That's them, yeah. He has the personality of a bath too. (laughs) He's a little cunt. He's a big cunt. Yeah. Well, he's little compared to me. (laughs) Right, and then you've got rescue. Yeah, so I've got, um, just before COVID happened, me and my um, fiance Angie were like, why don't we go to a cat shelter and just take a look, you know? The house is empty. And we ended up coming back with two kittens. Nice. Um, called Henry and Ivy. And um, they've been great. We, um, they're three years old now. Um, they're adorable. And then, oh, it's probably six-ish months ago, um, there was a stray cat that just turned up at her parents' house. And um, he's a ginger cat. And they just called him Orange. Nice. And, and he, so just, <laughs> he just wouldn't leave. Um, so they just started feeding him and he just started living with them. Um, but, yeah, he got hit by a car about, yeah, six, six or so months ago. And um, You already had them by this point or No, no, he was, li- he, he was living with my fiancé's oh, okay. parents. And, um, like, the car did a pretty significant amount of damage to one of his legs, like smashed it to pieces. Um, but he was like really, you know, all right besides that. We took him to the animal hospital and he was sitting on my lap in the car, just still purring. <laughs> it was <laughs> really fucked up. Fucked up. up. Yeah. Jesus. You, you could tell he was in a lot of pain. They mm. pretty much said like, you're going to have to euthanize him or it's going to be like at least... 10,000 bucks and we don't even know if like we can save him we don't know what the internal damage is it's going to be you know a few grand just to find out and um yeah my partner Angie was like I don't care like we'll pay it whatever and I was like (laughs) (laughs) yes we will (laughs) of course we will (laughs) how much can I get for an hour here on eBay (laughs) yeah um (laughs) So, yeah, it turned out the only damage was to his one of his legs, but it was severe and he's, he's estimated about 12 years old, so he's not young. Um, they wanted to just amputate the leg, but we convinced them to, like, try and put it back together and then we took him home and rehabilitated him for a couple months um, and it was hectic because the other cats didn't like him being there and he had a... F- like bullying him because of his yeah, leg. Yeah, we had to keep him in a separate room. We live in a two-bedroom apartment. Like, it's not easy. Um, we had to keep him, like, in a little cage and then he started smashing it up and had to let him out of the cage and then he started banging on the door and eventually we had to introduce them and then they started fighting and, like, it was fucked. Are they cool now? Yeah, they're all friends now. Um, but we would have to take him back to the hospital to the hospital like every week to get his plaster replaced to get um x-rays done all this shit it was really expensive so i sold one of my custom shop guitars like straight away um and then a lot of people were like oh you know we really want to help and um, I felt really fucking weird about that because mm. I don't like – so with the Patreon stuff, it's different because we're actually giving Providing something to these yeah. people. But for this instance, I was like, like I'm not, you know, dirt poor, but I don't have 15,000 spare dollars to for look after this yeah. fucking cat out of nowhere, you know. Mm. Um so we just put up a GoFundMe because so many people were asking for it and we felt really weird about it, but we, you know, raised a lot of money and obviously went straight to that and, like, there was a lot more on top. 
Um, but now he's doing really well. Like he's fully healed. He's really healthy. Legs fully healed. Legs fully healed. No limp. He limps. Some limp. He limps a bit when he runs upstairs, but it's he's also quite fat. So how it, fat? I really want to get pepper. <laughs> He's fucking fat. I want to get Pepper here for some. He's got the body shape of a avocado. Oh, an avocado <laughs> in a pub. Yeah, he's, Pepper. She's he's, not gonna come. he's stolen my fiance though, so he lives with us, and he and he just like spoons her every night. So I, I was never a cat guy, yeah, and the, then you know, I think that's how all cat guys are. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, had you, thrust into, into cat life, life yeah. and I'm like. You got fucking amazing. Yeah, you got to work for it, but the payoff is. Yeah, that's large. What, yeah that like mm. dogs, like not to slut shame, but dogs are sluts, <laughs> 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 and, and cats are like cats are. Yeah, you got to work for it. Yeah, and when you get it, it's mad. The pussy is good. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I, that works so and, well. And that's why I, when people say to me that they don't like cats, I just don't fucking trust them at all. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you don't understand consent. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mad. Yeah. But um, you, you want instant gratification, yeah. and that's why you're an only dog person. That's why you're a dog hoe. Mm. Exactly. And you're not a kind of cat guy. Um, <laughs> circle back to this guitar thing. So, come on. I, I like We're doing it. people plug things. Uh, you got a sick guitar. You got a sick guitar. Who's, I got a you signature got the, guitar. He's got a production model. Yeah. You can go buy it. Yeah. Jackson. Yep. And it's in the world's best color. Yes. I noticed that you... Well, it's the yeah. same color. I noticed that you have an affinity yeah, we, for the... We did. What, what, what would you call it? I Well, I called it Aquamarine because it, the color from that guitar the is... Military. Really. It's like a... A swatch that was taken from another one that I so when I started working with Jackson, um, I was playing a model called the B7 and it was pretty close to what I wanted, but it wasn't quite there. So I kind of ripped them apart and modified these guitars heavily and I had to like reroute uh, the wood and fill it back in for certain things on the first one that I got that I absolutely thrashed to death. And um, a guy in Sydney re sprayed it for me a color that was like a seafoam green strat from the 50s, but they um, used to coat them with this type of paint that like yellows from UV light. So as they age, they, the color changes. Yeah. And that's the color I really liked. So um, we took a swatch from that for the production model. So it's kind of seafoam green, but kind of not. Um, yeah. So we just called it aquamarine. That's like my favorite color ever. Yeah. Like Tamla came out with the one that kind of, Similar, this I think. Very similar color. Yeah. The uh, Tiffany blue, Tiffany green. Yeah, it's, or, is, it's, it, it's, it, is it Tiffany green or Tiffany blue? I don't know which one it is. It's something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's my shit. I saw that. Well, I didn't actually get a choice in the color, believe it or not. Why not? Well, they came to me and they said, "We want you to do." I'm no way slagging off Jackson, by the way, because the, these were all the right choices. I just but, I, I agreed with everything they said because that's I was like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. They were like, yeah, we want to do a, a guitar for you. At first, they, they wanted it to be a short, like, custom shop run, and I, was, I just said, no, like, I want it to be somewhat affordable. You know, those guitars would have been just obscenely expensive and only available to, like, 20 people, and I just didn't want that. Um, and then they said, yeah, we want it to be that colour, but with the... Uh, strat type headstock that you've had on your other signature like not signature like custom shop guitars they built for me and i was just like yep yep done that's but the exactly what shop, i want custom shop was the same color ish was it am i making that up nah so i've got other ones that are from the custom shop right some they all they're all different um but two of them had the fender style headstock so they wanted that headstock on the color from the one i modified that right. was an off-the-shelf one. Got it. Uh, and without, you don't have to go into any details. You could, but you know, I'm sorting one of these things out. You, you're on a percentage. Uh, apparently, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say no more. I just because I am like in the process of like talking about stuff like this, and I don't. Yeah. I don't know but anyone. Generally, else really. 
when you release any signature product, and I'm I'm actually double dipping on these guitars because they have my signature pickups too, which you oh. can buy from Bare Knuckle. You know, um. <laughs> thank God you didn't say Fish Man, whatever the other one is. <laughs> What's <laughs> we tried we tried those. Yeah. I, I just when people fan. say it, I just can't yeah, take it yeah, fucking seriously. Yeah. Oh, I play Fishman pickups. I'm like, <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've been we've been playing bare knuckle stuff like since Forever. we started. I'm sure you, you introduced yeah. Tom to Yeah, the, I did actually. Guy, yeah. I That's I actually right, got yeah. him one of my pickups in one of his guitars. Yeah. But they're they're from uh Falmouth. Um and the guy that runs it's just a really nice human tim he's yeah i think i met him lovely before. bloke yeah nice yeah uh, he's like an older bloke but he's absolutely shredded he's like one of the most fit people on the planet yeah fuck yeah love, love it. that shit love to see it. because i i remember talking to nolly once and like i'm sure nolly, nolly's dingwall i'm sure nolly makes a bit off that i don't know if he told me or someone else told me surely because everyone fucking plays them. Yeah. Well, Is your, your yeah, laptop sure. player? Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couldn't resist them. Sorry. Generally, <laughs> like, <it> <laughs> with any signature product, you, you are actually supporting that artist if you're a big fan of them. Um, it's a really good thing to go buy their shit because they will get some sort of a percentage from it. Um, and as well as that, the... The percentage, uh, like the perception percentage as well because yeah. they go, uh, the company that sponsors you goes... Oh shit! We sold this many. This yeah. guy's cool. Give yeah, him whatever he wants. Mm. Yeah, and um, you know that that goes for like I don't know, like sample packs, like all that sort of stuff. It's really good for artists, and like you know, for um, musicians that want to have have like a career in music as well. Like one of the important things to have is multiple income streams. Yeah, so and, many, and that's mm. one that just ticks over, and it's really good. So. You know, I I never expected to get that opportunity. Um, I don't know why they picked me. Was it just out of the blue? Well, there have been people asking for it for the longest time. So Yeah, so give yourself some fucking credit. <laughs> <laughs> My minor one was me just fucking pushing them. Yeah. yeah. You don't make this fucking symbol, boys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. And then one day they went, all right. I, just get, <laughs> I get imposter syndrome from this shit because... Same. yeah. Because the other artists that have signature Jacksons are like fucking Jeff Loomis and Chris Broderick. They play more than zeros and ones yeah. and 24s. They're yeah. just like some of the best guitar players in the world. And yeah, it's, it's crazy to be held in that sort of esteem when I really see myself as an artist manager that plays guitar in a band. <laughs> it's, it's weird, isn't it? I, I'm the same. I don't... Because you've seen yourself at your worst. Mm. Yeah. As, and everyone else has, for the most part, seen you at your best. So yeah. You people are fucking dumb. I'm mm. shit. Mm. I'm fucking terrible. You get synth, synth, uh, synth poster syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> not really. I don't know. Not with, not with the synths. Not with the synths. Are, you, are you into John Hopkins? Love John Hopkins. Right, because I can hear it. All, all of my favorite music comes out of the UK. I love Fortet, Floating Points. John Hopkins, Caribou. Burial. Oh, that Caribou's not UK. I think he's the one exception. Um, burial. <laughs> I love Burial. What? I don't know Burial. You don't oh. know Burial? No. I that, like Burial. That face sounds like I want to know. I don't like John's music for the most part, but I really like listen Burial to, and Fortet. Listen to, uh, I think it's called Untrue. Untrue. came out in like 2007. It's very dark. It's What's very, the one I mean? It, was it doesn't like, matter what it I feel like, like they were calling it like, I feel like they were calling it dub or dubstep back then, but it was like before not, Skrillex uh, was, yeah. really? before, before Skrillex made dubstep, dub, that kind of dubstep. Is it one guy? One guy. And also he, he, he no one knew who he was for a really long yeah, time. I think I have heard of, yeah. Burial, but not heard the music. Like it's real sad, sad boy. Oh, shit. I'm so in. Yeah, yeah, Sick. and like all of the, you know, the way he uses vocals, vocal chops, and you know, pitches them up and down, and uses them not like vocals and but more like textures in all of the atmosphere. It's like where I pull all my inspiration from for that sort of and stuff. That record is like 2007 or something, and it yep. it ha it still sounds very current. Like, I reckon you can probably, if you listen to it, you'll probably hear a bit of Bring Me In it as well. Really? I reckon, I reckon Jordan loves Burial. Ah, oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Before we get on to full music mode, look at that, it's an hour on the dot. That's exactly what I'm supposed to do. Boom. 
I, what I was going to say. What happens now? Well, we're going to do the, the Dream Festival. Oh, but cool. I need to get like the rest of the fucking pressy bullshit. Okay. Um, you ready for this? Yeah, let's right. go. Bash it's it not, out. It's not even, I'm going to bash it out on one <laughs> thing. Um, the choices for singles on the latest one or in general. Who's making, who's calling the shots? Why isn't side for a single? I'm there we just go. Trying, I'm just trying to remember what they That's even it. were. I uh, believe product manager. Oh, uh, yeah. Maya. <laughs> I oh, know she she put it to the team at Believe, and we kind of just agreed with everything anyway. The way that you it, don't have one in your head, at, like this is definitely a single. Um, uh, I feel like at this point in our career, we kind of know. Also, my favourites are never si- like what are considered singles, and the way that it's been sort of you know relayed to me is that when you do a single, that's not an opportunity for you to show you existing fans who you know are probably already going to like it anyway that's not for them it's for the new it's for, yeah. new, it's for that new reach which is why I find it fucking mind blowing when fans get annoyed about singles like yeah. music's been around for fucking ages guys you know this how this works. How works you know how this works like, this is designed the rest of the album is designed for you and yeah this it's is fair. designed to just get maybe a bit for you, but also for more people yeah. to come and get into. It's the same yeah. with fucking yeah. architects. Yeah. Like, here's mm. a single. No, those new songs, by the way, that they have. They sound so good. Like, I love live. Live, yeah. people were losing their shit. Yeah. Live is not the same as... Suck that, haters. Fucking the internet Reddit is not... Metalcore. The internet is not reality. Yeah. yeah. I do actually like Reddit Metalcore, but like... <laughs> like, yeah, the internet's not reality. Anyway. But yeah, we really found like especially that Obsidian had a lot of singles. We kind of forgot until we started touring again. Playing. That's the and, new thing. And though. then we we're like, oh my God, there's so many songs off this album that people are just frothing, mm. you know, and, and that are like singles. They're not deep cuts that we're playing. Yeah. Um, and, and they're like, like probably our, our biggest songs are mostly off that album live now. Mm. Like that's cool though. That's what yeah. you want to see. Like a, um, forty and Bloodline off Alien, uh, big ones, and then Carbonized, Echo Chamber, Plenty. Um, we've been opening with Clarity and that is Echo down. Chamber about the internet. Uh, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I don't want to go into it's, it. I just wanted to know from me. <laughs> go fucking read the lyrics and listen to the song. It's, m- it's more about it, how just, well, I'm paraphrasing yeah. Marcus, but my understanding is just he fucking hates people's shit opinions yeah. about yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that people just need to make their own minds up about yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I get it. I also think there's something to be said about you maybe having an idea about something and you're kind of like 50-50 on your own idea and then you see like 20 people say the same thing and like each other's stuff and you're like, mm. actually, no, I do believe yeah, that. Yeah, that's the biggest fucking... Yeah. We could do another yeah. two hours yeah. on fucking that yeah. shit. I got, I got into it. Yesterday, I actively tried to get cancelled on Twitter <laughs> because I was like being... I was being like really sensible on purpose where normally I would be like slightly reserved or, or slightly more in one direction to for comedic effect. But yesterday I was like, su- like super, I'm not going to tell anyone what it was, go and look at my Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but like I was super like, I might see if I can get cancelled. And then, because <laughs> I, I had the walk back ready for it. And all I was doing was just like poking everyone. No one bit. It was so annoying. I think it's over. <laughs> <laughs> no one bit. I was really trying. That's nothing. weird. That's weird. I've got nothing. Yeah. It's over guys. You can do what you want. Cancel culture is over. It's done. Um, it's not over. Blah, blah, blah. Leave me a fucking thing. <laughs> What's your favorite song on your own album? Then we're going to do your favorite songs by other people. We're not. We're going to do the Dream Festival. Um, you go first. Let me think. Like out of all the North Lane's catalog? Or the new album? No, no, no. New one. Yeah. Oh, new you didn't press here. Come on. <laughs> you, you, you go. <sighs> I like Clarity. That's that's a cool song. It's a fucking banger. You know what I like about that as well is classic Nolly, but mm. like you can hear the drums are real yeah. in that song because yeah. it's fast mm. and it's like it's not the same rim shot sound as later on in the album or later yeah, on in yeah. the song when, when it's it gets like a half sample section. Yeah, and it's like oh, I just love that yeah. Nolly snare drum sound has like a just a fucking tone to it. Mm. Loved it. 
I think um, I have two favorites. One is probably, is this a test? Just because it's like, that is, that's the closest North Lane song to what I actually listen to in real yeah. life. Yeah. Um, and the other song's probably Wild. Uh, oh no, that's not its real name. That's a demo. Um, Dark Solitaire. Why? Um, and for me, that was just like something about the melodies and the guitars There's like a tappy thing in there. And I just, every single time I listen to it, it just takes me back to this moment in lockdown where I just felt like just so helpless. Yeah, we had what, savage So you lockdowns. like the song? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, I like it for a different reason. I don't, li- the, I don't like it for the song. I like it because it's like almost like this, little totem in time i can listen to it and it just takes me straight back I to love that, that feeling music yeah, yeah, yeah. And no other song on the album does that it's just this just mm. this one bit it's like coming out of the chorus and the chorus only happens once as well it's just coming out of the chorus it goes into the verse again with this tappy thing that doesn't also it doesn't happen again either and it just takes me straight back there and just yeah i don't know it just feels feels for me nice my favorite is cypher cypher is yeah it's cool as well I think it's probably because I'm. I'm just sitting. We were man. playing yeah. that tonight. Yeah, are you? I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. Ask, thank yeah. Fucking god. Yeah. Uh, anyway, fun bit. Cool. I mean, that was all fun for me. <laughs> it's fun. Um, right. So we got a th- we got a thing on here, which is dream a, a dream festival. festival. Basically, I looked at other more successful podcasts, not in the music realm. What are they all have in common? Some sort of list based <laughs> thing. Okay. With opinions, and I invented Sick. the dream festival. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through it. It's not you're not going to have to suddenly come up with a million bands or whatever. Cool. Go from it. You want to try and draw from some experiences, which will naturally happen as mm-hmm. touring musicians. There are no limits. It is literally a dream. People can come back to life. It can be on oh. the fucking moon. It can be wherever, as long as you have like a reason for saying that thing. Not like oh, I wanted to be on Mars, and I go, oh, why Mars? Oh, space. Like, <laughs> that's wanted, literally what I was going to say. I wanted to be on Mars. Oh, my great grandfather was a fucking Mars. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Okay. And we're going to do it essentially in, in four play order, right? It's going to be very basic at the start, maybe a little bit. Oh, just, okay. Just a bit <laughs> touching at the start. <laughs> if anyone's listening to the audio, which will be edited and noise gated, I rubbed myself like a cat on the microphone. <laughs> um, so. Where, and you can have separate answers. You don't have to have a, a dual dream. Oh, we're not doing a dual dream. Okay. Well, I, when we get to the actual lineup, we'll try and connect. Okay. okay, okay. In, in That'll your, be insane. Yeah. In, <laughs> it's like black metal into like DJs. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we can make that work. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so where in the world would your dream festival happen? Oh, the only stipulation with this, and it does change people's minds, mm-hmm. is... North Lane is playing. Uh, I'm gonna oh. say, oh, I mean, what do you, what do you think, John? Where would you like to have where, it? anywhere Berlin? in the universe? In in the universe, yeah, but don't give me some random planet without a fact about the people, said planet. People still need to be able to come. Oh, right. Well, that that limits us to Earth. Then. <laughs> I mean, most people choose Earth. Earth, choose, okay. but it doesn't have to be Earth. No, it's going to be Earth for sure. Um, where is it going to be? Berlin. Melbourne. I think you said the same thing. Bergen. <laughs> Bergen in Norway. You know what? If you say Bergen in Norway, it will be the second episode in a row. With Who fucking what? said Bergen, Bergen in Norway? Uh, most Shadow of Intent. Most beautiful city I've ever seen. Plus, Fantoff Stave is there. You can go. Home of. Black oh, this metal. is really going to be super black metal. Yeah, nah, but like, it's not. North Lane's playing. Yeah, so. well, that's why I said Berlin, because it's like Melbourne, but in Germany. Mm. And there are sexy techno goths there as well. Yeah. We, could, we could cross collab here. But I feel like John's... What about the weather, though? John's got other ideas. I feel like, I feel like somewhere... No, it has to be cold. Can it be like in the future? Absolutely. Okay, so like in the future in Japan, think like... <laughs> think like Cyberpunk, all these these things, they're yeah. they're oh, everywhere. Neo Tokyo, they're everywhere. Neo Tokyo, yeah, nice, yeah. Fucking Mount Fuji in the background. Yeah, I back that. Okay, this this. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. Okay, maybe maybe there's maybe it's a traveling festival and one other time is in Bergen, Norway. Okay, uh, when was the last time you went to Norway? Just aside, long time, ago. long, long yeah, long same. Time ago, I've been yeah. fucking ages. They yeah. stopped listening to music. I think so. Okay, last time I went there was 
a holiday, not even to play. Nice holiday place. I, I went to Inferno Festival. Oh, sick. I saw Dimu and Opeth and... <laughs> Dimu... They're the headliners. Didn't play... They don't play this fucking... Whatever the second track on Puritanical is. Progenies? Ble- no. No. Ble- uh, Testing my, my memory. Thro- throne of fucking... Blessings upon the throne of tyranny. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> They don't play it. I was so drunk when they played that I don't even remember what they played. They don't play it. I almost fell off the fucking balcony in the (laughs) venue and I was like... (laughs) That's fucking sick. Yeah, they don't play it. I grilled the drummer at some drum festival and I was like, why the fuck don't you play that song? And he was like... Because he he was slagging my mate off that did a drum thing that day and he was like oh, his online videos are obviously edited, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, bro, I just watched that. It was fucking insane. So this guy's like Billy Big Balls, Demi Borgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, why don't you play Blessings Upon the Throne of Tyranny anymore? What's the matter? You can't play it? And then he was like, oh, it's the guitarist, not me. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Still love your band. Good Still move, good move. Band. Uh, when was the last time you went to Japan? Uh, Alien Cycle, so 2019, yeah, I want to say. It's my favourite fucking yeah, place. It's, it's great. It's so good. Get to go back this year. I can't fucking wait. When are you oh, going? Nice. Uh, for Australia? You can't say. Yeah, but it is with Australia. Yes, yeah, so pretty soon. Congrats. Oh, I can't fucking wait. Enjoy. Being be in your neck of the woods as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Talk about that off this. Um, okay. So oh, I, I know about that, actually. In a good way or a bad way? In a good way. All right. Uh, I spoke <laughs> What's the bad it? way? Well, yeah, I don't know. I know about that, actually. It's, uh, it's going to be a weird one. <laughs> You're actually playing the spider venue. <laughs> where my You're brain... playing the Viper Room. <laughs> yeah. My brain immediately goes there. Okay, so we're in Neo Tokyo. Neo Tokyo. Um, in the future. I mean, we could we could fuck this up a bit and combine both things. We okay. could have like Japan and Norway had a war, a okay. warway, if you will. <laughs> and what ended up happening is Japan settled in Bergen. And t- see, this is me getting super D&D now. This, I was told you it was D&D. Japan settled in Bergen and made it like Neo-Bergen. So, <laughs> That's so, sick. So, okay. okay, okay. I'm so we're it. in I'm Neo-Bergen. Yeah. Bergen's got mountains around it. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this Beautiful now. I'm into it. I'm into it. Mountains. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what... It's, it's, yeah, we're yeah. doing the Fuji thing, but we're doing it there with the mountains and the stuff. All right, yeah, great. Great. Okay. Do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> you want another shit coffee or what? <laughs> we'll be quick. Um... <laughs> What's the accommodation? And again, North Lane is playing. So, uh, so the accommodation is like yeah, you, do you need to piss. Do you need to leave? What's wrong You've with you? You've got a real. I do need to piss. Oh we, my god! We can, I, I can just edit it if you oh, want to piss because right, right. it's really affecting the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, accommodation. Accommodation. Oh, right. What's, what's yeah. the accommodation? Seamless edit. Oh, my blood pressure's up, so I'll be slightly <laughs> fucking <Just> red. Red. <laughs> um, what's your accommodation? Um. You are playing, so... Oh, so we need to use this accommodation. Yes, so you can't okay. be like... Wanna, igloos. Yeah. You, okay. Igloos? I mean, no, I'm saying no, not doesn't igloos. doesn't want igloos. It'd be cold. Well, if it's in Norway and you had igloos, it'd be sick. If you had like... Big, like big like the modern ones, style Because then at night you can watch the fucking northern lights and shit through mm, the roof. Actually, can yeah. you see the northern lights in after the Neo-Tokyo... Neo Bergen War <laughs> <laughs> with all the new oh, neon true. lights. Yeah, with all the so neon maybe light. what we could do is they could have the accommodation off site and have a little bullet train mm. to take you there. Got that from after Japan. you play, and it's in the middle of nowhere, and, and you can watch the northern lights. So Com is really quick to get to because yep. of the bullet train. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just five minutes. Five minute bullet train. And then, you can, the, and then, you, can, then you can see the Northern Lights as well. While you're out yeah. there. That's perfect for me. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm in. Um, yeah, it's away from the rabble. Away from, away, the, yeah. away from the noise as well, yeah. yeah. And is it like that's set aside for bands only? Yes. Yes. And the top tier of the North Lane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cruise, Patreon, at a, cruise at Patreon. a different place anyway. They can come, yeah. Cruise in a different place. <laughs> you still, was the piss not good? You still don't want to be here. <laughs> You got you got like fucking twenty minutes if that. He's got deliveries to make. What do you think of it? You can make you can make it through. I'm the one annoyed by Amazon. <laughs> oh, I want to fucking kill that guy. I'm so fucking furious. <laughs> um, okay, so calm. We got we got the accommodation. What's catering? Ooh, 
See, it's like your brain. It's just ticking. sushi, isn't it? Well, not just sushi. No, but they've they've settled there, so they've sort of made their mark. No, now you're. Now, okay, okay, this yeah, is yeah, your yeah. dream festival. Okay, you're not thinking. You're thinking too much about the war. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> which was my thing. <laughs> um, there's going to be Red Sparrow Pizza from okay. Melbourne doing pizzas. Do you know there. Red Sparrow? I don't know. Best vegan pizza in the world. Really? Calling it. Yep. Um, there's going to be. Uh, What's your favourite place? Nobu. Sushi, isn't it? Nobu. Nice. Running a la carte dining. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, every band will have a private chef that will make for you whatever you want if it falls outside of that. Nice. Including cocktails. How are they? How are they? How's this set up? What's this kitchen? Well, you're going to have... A dressing room on site just for you. None of this shit where they, the festival's like, oh, you got the room for two hours and then you need to piss <laughs> off. You're going to have that and yep. an intercom for the kitchen where you just tell the chef what you want made. But they're stoked on it because this sounds yeah. a bit fucking... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make me a You're sandwich. my slave. <laughs> You're my slave. You're my personal slave. Make me a fucking sandwich. Um, all right, I'm into that. Are you mm-hmm. agreeing with that? That's sure. Cool. Sure, that sounds and pretty good. the cocktails... Mm. Just get me into the brain. What are you having? <laughs> well, yeah. What's your uh, what's your what's your pre-show, during show, post-show? During show. I don't drink during during shows during anymore or before gigs anymore. I'm boring Bro, these days. Fucking professional. Mm. Yeah, I hardly drink on tour at all. Mm. Too much health running. Yeah, oh, I, I've got to run. I could take hop, skip, and jump next week. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's more about. Um, the other stuff, because if I get pissed, I can't do my job. Mm. But anyway, if I'm drinking cocktails, definitely going to be some Negronis on the menu. Mm. I'm a big Negroni fan. But besides that, I'd just be probably not drinking cocktails and looking for a nice selection of reds, including some super Tuscans, maybe some fruity organic shit. Mm. Definitely um, some Eden Flow from South Australia. Oh, he's you a, are in he's the, a great the, producer. The wine, the wine place. Um, he's not happy about this, John. Yeah. What are you having? And the, um, and the bars tequila, run margarita, by, spicy. Yeah. Spicy mugs. Bars the, run by who? Crowbar. Nice. Shout out, Crowbar. Yep. Spicy mugs. Spicy mugs. Love a spicy mug. What's your, what's your rim? I'll Tahine or salt? I'll do salt. I'll do salt. But, but if you want to put a bit of spice on it, I'm not going to be upset about what, it. Just like a jalapeno mug? Yeah. Yeah. Big fan. Huge. I'm, I'm mm. hanging out with him. I can't do wine. <laughs> I, I, I love wine, right? But it fucks with my sinuses. I don't know if oh, I'm yeah. allergic to it so or something. So we're going to put architects on the bill then so I can drink with Ali. Okay, we're going to get we'll get to that right <laughs> yeah. now. Okay. Oh, Ali loves a fucking wine. Yeah. Okay, so we've got yeah, we got the cocktails. We're in Neo Bergen after a war. <laughs> no one died during the war, actually. Just so you know. Just it so was like know. a Cold War situation, yeah, yeah, chill, but for some chill. reason... They gave up some of a Bergen lot, a to, lot of it to Japan, <laughs> and it now looks like Neo Bergen. Uh, what was the accommodation again? I forgot. <laughs> Offsite igloos. igloos. Offsite igloos. Yeah. Bullet train. Yep. Yeah. Them. Yep. We have. There's there's going to be facilities on site too. Go on. Yeah, what kind we of need facility? to go to the toilet. What, uh, what kind of facilities? Fucking, there has to be a sauna. Oh, oh okay. 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 Ice bath. <laughs> For you. Thank you. Um, you know, not an icer. Nah, no. I would have thought after that, this is like a whole nother hour of shit. Uh, but, but yeah, sauna, yes. Hot tubs, yes. Hot tubs. We. I'm still in this from malevolence. Hot tubs. You know, in you saunas. can you can watch the band from. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So like up in the stands, but just for the band. Also, so you drop, can have drop in that he's listening to the pod. I like that. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> Glass saunas, you look out of the that sauna, watch the bands. That is fucking dream. Right? Yeah. That's a fucking But because it's Bergen, it's cold, so you just step out. Or you even jump in the fjord and there's, the there's your ice. fjord. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, like, have to have massage therapists on site. Love it. We all need a massage after the gig. This that sounds, sounds like great. This, it sounds like the sort of thing if Japan and Norway put their heads together, It'd be they would exactly come up. this. <laughs> yeah, exactly come up. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just make this perfect. Yeah, yeah go on yeah. then. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining like like a stadium, half stadium arrangement. 
Was it top tier just for the bands? Oh, I, you know? I'm seeing this. Mm. Yeah. And Mountains that's in where, the background. That's where the fucking hot tubs and the saunas and all that, it's all up there. So you can look down and watch your friends kill it and then, you know, Everyone else. have a nice view. Yeah. I fucking love it. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'm in there. You're there. Now, who You're there. are, you got to pick one each headliner. North Lane's playing and it needs to be a band of headline size, I guess. But how big is the headliner size is up to you. It could be North Lane. Some people have picked their own band and then to be, Malevolence uh. was Malevolence supported by Drake. <laughs> 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 you can do whatever you like. Bearing in mind, you will have to play quite late if mm. you're if you're. Yeah, I don't want a headline. No, I don't want a headline. You're gonna get fucked up very soon. I want to play like early evening slot, like two before headliner. Nice. That is the best perfect, time of day yeah. to play because everyone's as rowdy as they're gonna get. Mm. But then you can still enjoy yourself after. It's perfect. Yeah. So who is playing after? Uh that's tough. Does it, have, can, does it have to be a band? No. Okay, so what we can do here at this point, we can split the festival because we've done quite well to be on the same grounds yep. here. Yep. We can split the festival and have two, we're Hellfest style, two main <laughs> stages like that. All right, perfect. Who are you picking? You go first, John. Um, it's going to have to be Fortet. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, all the bands out there. No, That's all right. No, no it's... Oh, it's Fortet. Pretty, I, I can imagine it happening in Neo I, Tokyo, yeah, Neo yeah, yeah, Bergen. Yeah. And then I just want to know so we can really get the, the contrast. Scope, the scope, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tall. <laughs> oh, sick, sick. <laughs> what a fucking sick, day. Yeah. yeah. I would love it. Yeah. You ever played with Tall? No. No. It feels like that's a good fit. Obviously, I think it's a who you know situation. Yeah, have that. to be, have to be. Because they pick some weird supports. Yeah. Yeah, who, who did that last time? Um, uh, with them. I can't remember. Oh, I was no. at the bar and I just went in with all played. No, but even on the post, I feel like I'm I feel like, like it's always like I, I saw them something obscure. Once, and they asked Meshuggah to do it, and Meshuggah were busy, so all they did, this was like, it's got to be 20. Fuck. Who knows? 20, whenever 10,000 days was. Yeah. Mm. And they just, they. They asked for Meshuggah and Meshuggah were busy, so they just played Catch 33 over the PA. Because <laughs> it was on the Catch 33 touring cycle and that was the support act. Jesus. No kidding. They've had like comedians and shit as well, so right? fucking weird. Oh, yeah. that's, yeah, that's what they did. That's right. It was yeah. a comedian. But yeah, like thinking of headline size bands that I would love to watch. Yeah. Like Tool of one of the best bands to watch, so. Light show, discography, yeah. fucking. Performance is just unreal. Yeah. I can't give you this with Fortet. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I can't, I'm I can't sorry. connect. I'm, I, I'm I appreciate sorry. it. Yeah. That it's there. Uh, favorite tool album? Question to both or one? Oh, probably 10,000 Days. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. How close is it to number two, which I, I assume is Lateralis? Uh, I think the reason I like 10,000 Days more is because I think it has more um, good songs, but also better production. <laughs> the production is better. It highlights it a bit more. Agreed. Um, but, yeah. I. It's a bit punchier. It's, a yeah, bit more like. But it's all fantastic. Their whole catalogue's fantastic. Yeah, Even Fear Inoculum, like, grew on me. Mm. It took me so it long. Yeah. yeah. I, got it, I got it eventually. I think it was just because of how long it took to mm. come out that it was just always going to be, quote unquote, a disappointment to like hardcore fans. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because you're, you make up in your head what it's going to be and mm. there's no way you could even fucking yeah, fathom and, what mm, it is. And a part of your enjoyment of the other records is like the place and time where you discovered it, how old you were, and then also like just replaying it again yeah. and again. Because there wasn't that much around at the time either. Yeah. So it was mm. like fucking Tool sounded like Tool. And now mm. there's like other bands that yeah. have in the 13 years filled your brain a bit. Sure, yeah. Scratched the itch a little bit. Carnival. <sighs> Love that fucking band. That can be your next band. I honestly don't think I was that... I going to say I need a smaller... Yeah, there's, I don't think there's been another 
band that has sort of given me such a an enormous source of inspiration as that band has. Like when we got the option to tour with them back in like 2013 or something or whatever it was, I'd actually never even listened to them. I'd heard the name, but I'd never listened to them. And so we're like, we're going to do the tour, of course. Like I'll, I'll familiarize myself with all their stuff. And so I had like two albums, three? No, three. three was, I had three albums to go through. It's it the, was... Uh, I don't know, it's the and Sound Awake. It's tomato sound away and then asymmetry. And then asymmetry, asymmetry was the one that we yeah. were doing. Yeah. And um all three albums fucking great. They're mm. so good, man. They're so good. And um yeah, just every song just like just took me to a place and just the guitar work and the the vocals. The vocals are fucking awesome as well. Like Incredible. I feel like in prog bands, I like the vocals is the like the last thing that I really Heaps give a shit prog. about. And it's like it's right up there. It's like another lead instrument for me. I didn't check. I, I spoke about it before in the podcast. I didn't check them out for the longest time because yeah. of the name. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. literally just like, you should check out this band. And I was like, Carnival. No, it's Carnival. And I was like, well, double no. I'm not going <laughs> to fucking do it. And then I saw them at uh, Download and they just opened the stage and someone was like, come on, watch this band. And I was like, okay then. And I just went, this is the best thing I've seen yeah. in fucking yeah. forever. This is my yeah. new favorite yeah. band. Where have I fucking been? Yeah. That's it was like that for us too. We were playing a festival that they were one of the headliners on, and um, we knew their front of house guy, and we just got pulled over to the stage to watch, and I barely listened to him. I mean, Nick had yeah Nick Nick, Nick used to have pictures of the drummer. <laughs> In his school book, <laughs> and on the last night of the tour, I got pissed and I told him, <laughs> and he's never been able to live. It's so fucking funny. Steve's coming on the podcast. Oh, like sick! Weeks, oh, you remind around. him about? Oh, you can say here. Yeah, 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 here in like a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, Nick will never let me live that down. But yeah, I I remember just seeing him and being <laughs> like, so "This is my new favorite band." Like, and also in the second, in the same thought, you're just like, "Wow, I know absolutely nothing about the instrument that I play." Yeah, yeah. the fucking the like the rhythm, disgusting. And they but they're so musical. Yeah, like, so like, what's your choice of rhythm? Oh, it's a dotted Everything. eighth note forever, <laughs> and then another rhythm in, incorporated as if that's the pulse. But there's fucking it's like poppy. Yeah, so. yeah. I think it's the vocals that make it poppy. Shout out Carnival. Okay, is, is one Big of you boys. picking Carnival then? That's me. Okay, so we got Carnival. You got to pick another like slightly smaller band for. Whatever. Are we working our way down now? Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just, I want one, one massive band, one Carnivaly sized band that you would see on a headline the second stage or maybe be main support. Then an up and comer. Which Mr. Manager Man can give me that one of these little plug. I um, I'm gonna struggle with this next band because it kind of just depends what mood I'm in. What mood are you in right now? We're what? at the festival right now. Opeth. Fuck yeah! I'm in an Opeth mood as well. <laughs> uh, it's the season. I don't know what the fuck yeah, it is. It has to be. If it was in summer, I'd be like, oh, it has to be Slayer. Yeah. But Opeth. Oh, uh, you're yeah. Europe in at this time of year is Opeth music. Yeah. Mm. Yep, absolutely. Favorite Opeth album? Look at me having an actual music podcast for once. Man, it's tough because their catalog is fucking good. Yeah. I love Damnation. I love Deliverance. I love Blackwater Park. I love Ghost Reveries. Um, I'm going to say probably Blackwater is mm. the, I reckon, is their magnum opus. Um, it was so far ahead of its time. Yeah, and, and it still sounds fucking great. And it's just phenomenal, yeah. I, and the title track is the fucking best. It is the craziest shit. It's like 10 minutes long. Yeah. It just takes you on a journey. And they still play it like that. Musically, they make albums that are, are quite far removed from that now, but they still play all that shit live. It's fucking cool. Yeah, apparently they did another like death metal prog album. And they, they fucking kind of, deleted it. I kind of fell it. off. Oh, they, oh. They, they said, yeah, they said that they threw it out. It was like a recent thing. That's so annoying. I know. Because <laughs> even like, because his, it's not his voice, because he did a bunch of bloodbath stuff. Like, mm. He can do it. He still riffs. They just don't want to, I guess. Good for them. Yeah. And the other stuff still exists. Yeah. That's true. Um, you got an up and coming you want to plug anyone? <laughs> you don't have to. For the... Um, for the festival, yeah, 
I mean, I could. It's not real, but yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, it is. I could pick one of my artists, but it wouldn't be fair. Of course, gonna, it is. It's an Aria Award. I'm going to say <laughs> Speed. You fuck oh, yeah! Nice, <laughs> that's nice. fucking awesome. Nice. I really, really want to see them live. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if I'll do any shit. I haven't even seen. I haven't seen what they're up to in the summer. They're doing some festivals over here in the summer. I think. Fuck yeah! Good for yeah. them. Band's crazy. Check out Speed. Um, okay. Then all we need to do is the after party, and then we're good. We're done. You dream, and, and again, back in the zone. You're you've just played the festival in the place that we are. You are you want to have your best night possible. It might just be an early night, but you've just you've played, you've watched four tet. It's Opeth, not an early night. It's not tall, an early night. Carnival. Yeah, that's huge night. Yeah, huge <laughs> night. So mm. what is happening after? <laughs> John's gonna do a DJ set. Yeah, I'll do a DJ set. You want to work? Six in the morning. It's not work. At least if you fucked up. What are you fucked up on? Because <laughs> they decriminalized everything in, oh, in Neo Burger. Okay, well then I'm doing everything. Fuck I'm doing yeah. everything. Fuck yeah. The John DJ set. So what? You're just fucking around. You just. Oh, you have a couple of wines and fucking fall asleep. No, you want to go see the Northern Lights later, so you staying yeah. up for a little bit. Uh, aren't John you? will force me to stay up. Yeah, yeah, there's an app for staying up. Right, <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of it around. There's a drug for staying up as well. <laughs> yeah. You can stay up. You watch John. Yeah, set. I'll fucking stay up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> then you're gonna watch. So, John, how long is your set before the Six Northern hours. Lights? Oh, oh, an, hour, an hour. An hour. An hour. I'm not trying to do that shit all it's night. It's an hour, but it feels like ten minutes. Exactly. Do you actually do DJ sets? Um, I've been playing in Melbourne a little bit, but not as myself. I'd usually go back to back with a friend. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've done probably like five shows. Is it under your own name? It's. It's at the moment. It's just John. That's that's the name. As in just John. Just John. Just John. Because everyone goes, "What's the name?" I go, "Just John." Oh, that's cool. So that's the thing. Yeah, that's a good little name. Yeah. Okay, just John's doing the after party. Yeah. Fucking Josh is absolutely chinged out of his brains, <laughs> trying to stay up. <laughs> he didn't say this, but I said this. I've spiked him. He's, he's, he's fuck, fucking. His up. fucking teeth are all red from the <laughs> wine. And he's up all night. Uh, yeah, that's good. You're on tour to check the fucking thing. You got a US tour, Fit for a King. Yep. Look at me not even having to check my notes. I and can't then, wait um, to complain about this fucking drive. <laughs> I'm going to go full Karen in a minute. We got that and then we got uh, Not Fest in Australia. Oh, do you know what? I got asked to do some sort of this shit. Oh, there, yeah? But I'm already on tour. Yeah, it's where a are long you? fucking where are you? flight too, isn't it? I would do that. Go to Australia for free. What are you? Where are you when you're not so many? Because it's soon, isn't it? It's the end of the Beartooth tour, I think. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's, you're, you're yeah. about to do a bunch of the same rooms we've just done. Yeah. Oh, damn. It's Beartooth. It's going to yeah. be crazy. Fucking, because of that horrible shit that happened at Brixton. It's going to oh, be yeah. moved to Wembley. Fucking can't wait to put, I can't not wait to bad. play four people. <laughs> <laughs> I can be on at fucking seven, <laughs> seven o'clock. It's so yeah, hard to empty get into arena. Wembley. Can't wait. Nah, but it'd be sick. Good nah, that'd be mad. Happy birthday. Okay, yeah, it's my birthday, yeah. yeah. Fucking, I'll be getting... It's actually his birthday. What? Not now. On, oh. When we play Wembley. Oh, well, happy birthday for that. We always one. tell people it's Nick's birthday when it's not. Especially in restaurants. shy about it. When, <laughs> that's so fucking mean. <laughs> When's your birthday? Let's just get that out of there. 27th of August. 29th of May. What star sign does that mean? You? Virgo. Gemini. Oh, a bunch of cunts. He's a Gemini man. <laughs> bunch of cunts in here. I'm a Pisces, <laughs> so between us, we're the most toxic trio possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. Thanks for coming. Thanks, yeah. Craig. I appreciate you. Thank you, mate. Thanks it's for having fun. Thank you, mate. I'll, um, it was a good run. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Go see North Lane on tour. Please. And Please listen come. to Obsidian. Goodbye. <laughs>